Greetings, 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 my beloved brothers in the name of Jesus. Welcome to another uh, session with the Be That Man Men's School of Ministry with me, Reverend Colin Francis. We started a series uh, the last time that we were together called True Grit. And so we had session one last week and we're going to be continuing with True Grit session two. I pray that it will be a blessing to you and, and encourage you and edify you. It's such a powerful teaching. There's plenty more to come. But tonight we're going to continue. Just keep that word in your spirit. True grit. True grit. It takes courage to serve God. It takes courage to stand upon his word. It takes courage to be the men that God has called us to be. So I want you to have a listen to this. True grit. Session two. Be edified, be blessed, and let the glory and the anointing of God just flood your life in Jesus' name. Enjoy. Glory be to God. Every time I, I look at this prayer, I say, it, it, it wakens something in me, you understand? Because a lot of our men are dead right now. They're dead, they're weak, they're wishy-washy, because they're more afraid of men than they are of God. But we need to get back to the heart of God. And that's why I pray, Lord God. Every time I start my prayers, I put Lord God. You know why I put Lord God? Because when Lord God is used in the Bible, it refers to Jehovah Elohim. Glory be to God. The divine dream team. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I'm asking the Godhead, hallelujah, to look on the threats of the enemy and grant unto me that with all boldness and fear and fearless confidence, I will speak and declare his word without fear, concealment, and ambiguity. Hallelujah. The divine dream team. Imagine that. That's what's in us. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Father, we give you praise. Glory be to God. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 13. Oh, bless God. Sometimes, when we have meetings like this, we need to sit and listen and observe and take our notes because sometimes we can do too much talking nothing wrong with meeting together to have fellowship but sometimes we need to sit and to be still and to hear what the word of the lord is saying to us and that's exactly what we're about today hallelujah here's what the bible says be alert and on your guard stand firm in your faith your conviction respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. Keeping the trust and holy fervor, born of faith and part of it. Act like men and be courageous and grow in strength. That's the amplified version. This breaks it down a little bit more, but I'm going to give some definitions in a moment. That's the amplified version. Now the Bible's concept, just looking at that scripture alone, the Bible's concept of man is first and foremost one who walks with God. The scripture that we read say in, in the book of, in the book of uh, Psalm chapter 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. That man is Ish, and Ish is a man in relation to God. Ish is a man who walks with God. Hallelujah. The Bible's concept of man is one whose life is totally submitted in obedience to God. So when your life is totally submitted in obedience to God, that is what the Bible tells you when you are a man of God. You do everything that God says. You submit everything to God. You give everything to him. You place all that you are in his hands. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And then it's one who has a passion for God and the things of God. Well, the apostles had a passion for God and the things of God. 
That's why they pray for fearless confidence and boldness and true grit to be able to preach the word of God with confidence and strength and boldness because they were being threatened. But they had a passion for God and the things of God and that's the kind of men that God wants. Yeah. That's the kind of men that God wants, to raise, wants us to raise up. Men who have a passion for God. Hungry for him, thirsty for him, desiring him and all that he is. Glory to God. And one who respects and values his relationship with God. Do you know that there are people out there that don't value their relationship with God? They don't even value God. They don't place value on God or the things of God. My, my, my. I'm concerned. I'm concerned that when a man tells me that he's born again, that he has no passion for God, that he, he has no, no respect or value in his relationship to God, something ain't right. True men of God have a passion for God. True men of God respect and value their relationship with God. Hallelujah. True men of God submit themselves in humble obedience to God. Bless the name of the Lord. And also one who acknowledges that he is empowered by God to be who God says he is. I must know who I am in the God in whom I serve. So when somebody speaks to me, I will say, uh-uh, that's not how God sees me. That's not what God says about me. I choose to accept what God says because I have a passion for him. I respect his word. I value what he says. Glory to God. That's what makes the difference. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. The Apostle Paul was without question a very tough man. A very tough man. He was a man who stood for no nonsense both before and even further after his conversion. You know the kind of person that the Apostle Paul was, yet God still chose to use him. He was still saved to the uttermost. His personality remained the same, but God just used it for his glory. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, Paul's walk with God was one that enabled him to stand strong as a man and not just any man, but God's man. Paul was a man in relation to God. Hallelujah. He was thoroughly masculine in his attitudes and characteristics, which would have been shaped during his growing up. All oh, glory be to God. And God, through his son Jesus Christ, transformed Paul's life taking his whole personality and awakening the innate characteristics and uh, that, the characteristics that were established by God when he created him. Because when God met Paul, when Christ met Paul on the road to Damascus, Paul was not born again. Paul had an attitude towards the people of the way because that's what they were known as. But the moment Christ met him, something in him woke up. There was a spirit in him that was dead and it came alive, hallelujah. And that's what needs to happen to our men today. We need to quicken that spirit. Amen. Glory to God. His life was never the same again, hallelujah. And my life was never the same again when Jesus came into my heart because my spirit that was dead came alive. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? And that's the kind of men that God wants to have. Paul became a man with true grit. He had a dogged determination to do the things of God. He had a dogged determination to only please God. Hallelujah! Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I'm telling you, God is good. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. And as a man of true grit, Paul admonished the church in the scripture that we read earlier. He admonished the church of Corinth to act like men and to be courageous 
and to grow in strength. I'm telling you that God does not want us to be weak and wishy-washy. We have a power in us that is beyond anything that we could ever imagine. And all we need to do is just awaken it. Start embracing all that God says about you. The Bible says that you were made in his image after his likeness. So when I prayed, I said, well, Lord, you made me in your image after your likeness. You breathed all that you are into me. Hallelujah. You understand that? You start speaking the word over your life. And you become what God says you are. Not what the world says you are. What God says you are. The kind of man that God says you are. That's what you and I ought to be. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Father, we give you praise. The Apostle Paul's commands was like that of a great general, general to his soldiers. His speech was of one expecting to win the battle. He expected nothing less. Any time the Apostle Paul spoke, he expected to win. He expected victory. If he spoke healing, he expected healing. Glory be to God. If he spoke a word of encouragement, he expected people to be encouraged. Amen? Every time he spoke, he expected something to happen. Why? Because he was a man in relation to God. Hallelujah. His life was changed. So we need to have the attitude and the passion for the things of God. My beloved brothers, we don't have to remain the same. Hallelujah. We can, we can leave this place even now for full of vigor and vitality, filled with a desire and a hunger for the things of God, knowing that there are some things that we have got wrong. Don't be afraid of that, because even I've made mistakes. I've made some bad choices. But you see, I learned from them. That's the key thing. And there are a lot of men who have made some bad choices and have made some bad mistakes, and we're not here to judge you. God is the ultimate judge. What we're saying to you is that you can quicken your spirit and get back to where you were. Get back to that place where you first met the Lord. Get back to that zeal and that joy and that excitement and be what God says you are and not what the world says you are. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to break down, before I move any further, I'm going to break down the word true, true grit. I want you to listen to these, to these definitions, because they're all relevant, okay? True grit. So before we move further into the word, I'm going to just break down uh, a few of these words. When something is true, it means it is not false. It means it is not fictional or illusion. You understand that? It also means it is factual. It is real, not synthetic. And it also means faithful and loyal. You know, when someone says, be true to me. It means sincere. Anything that is true is sincere. It conforms to a required standard. Glory be to God. These are all relevant. That's why it's important to make, take them down. Because when you start meditating on these words, I'm telling you it's going to make a difference. Glory to God. And it also means exactly in tune. Hallelujah. Exactly in tune. And that's the word true. The word grit. Now the word grit is quite detailed. The word grit, I'm going to give you every one of them because when we go through the scriptures, you'll remember a lot of these words. Indomitable. Well, indomitable means unconquerable. Unconquerable and also courage. So the word grit means unconquerable and also courage, toughness or resolution. It means guts, fortitude, firmness, boldness, determination, resolve, constancy, doggedness, tenacity of purpose, stability, backbone, iron will, to stand, to keep or remain 
firm. That's the word grit. Isn't that, that's powerful. And can you imagine that when you are standing, you know what I mean, with true grit, it means that you are standing knowing that you are unconquerable, that you are filled with courage, that you are tough for God. Hallelujah. You have the guts to stand on the word of God. You have the fortitude to declare the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are determined no matter what to declare the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. You, you know tenacity of purpose. When you are tenacious, it means that you don't give up. You don't give up. No matter what, you don't give up. It may look with your natural eyes that things ain't happening, but in the spirit realm, things are happening. So tenacity means you do not give up. Glory to God. Backbone. Sometimes we need a bit of backbone, don't we? Yes, we do. To deal with certain situations, we need backbone. All of this is to do with the word grit. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Isn't that wonderful? That's how detailed that word is. And I'm telling you that when you are walking with the Lord in the light of his word, isn't that right? You are unconquerable. Because there is nowhere for the enemy to get in. There's no room for him. Oh, glory to God. Father, we give you praise. Look at that. There's more definitions here. Take the bull by the horns. <laughs> uncompromising, unbending, unyielding, unmoved, unshaken, unflagging, unflinching, unflexible, unwavering, unfaltering, unshrinkable, undiverted, un undeterred, immovable, unswerving, unhesitating. All of that is to do with the word grit. That's how powerful we are. That's how powerful we are when we start using and declaring the word of God with guts and fortitude. Oh, glory to God. What a mighty God we serve in there. I'm telling you, God is good, man. Hallelujah. All right, here we have a prayer to pray now. Glory be to God. I like to kind of just break in with these prayers and just let's get, let's get our juices going now, amen? All right, let's do this together. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I am unconquerable. I have fortitude, guts, boldness, and a fearless confidence. I stand firm on God's word. I remain steadfast, immovable, standing my ground, and always abounding in the work of the Lord, as my labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. Come on, I declare that today. I dare you to declare that today. I dare you to declare that today. You let that devil know that you know that he knows that you know that he knows that you know that he knows that you know. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say that with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. All right, come on. I want to, in fact, let's stand up. Let's, let's stand up. Let's just do this. Let's just do this prayer now. Because we need this. Every one of us as men, we need this. All right, let's go. One, two, three, go. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I am unconquerable. I have fortitude, guts, boldness, and a fearless confidence. I stand firm on God's word. I remain steadfast, immovable, stand in my ground, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. As my labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise be to God. Glory to your name, Lord. You see, that's the God we serve. I, I'm, I'm telling you guys, we've got to start waking up. Yeah? You know, when I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself as well. But we've got to start waking up now. Because we, we can't, we mustn't, we don't want any more nonsense. The word of God is true. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is mighty. And when we have a passion for the word of God and the things of God, I'm telling you, your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Amen. It will never be the same. Hallelujah. Wherever you go, people will look at you. You know, sometimes I'm walking down the road and people look at me and smile. And I don't even know them. So I smile back. You understand? But when the anointing of the Lord is upon you, that's what happens. When the presence of God is around you, that's what happens. People that you wouldn't even think would say hello to you, they speak to you. They'll smile at you. 
You understand? Sometimes I'm walking down the road and I'm just smiling because the joy of the Lord is on my life. And, people, and as I'm smiling, I guarantee you as I walk past somebody, they're smiling too. That's the kind of men that God wants. Hallelujah. Men after his own heart. Oh, praise God. So he says, be alert and on your guard. That's what this part of the scripture teaches us in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. Be alert and on your guard. Soldiers and armies that fail to be watchful at every moment, day and night, will suffer defeat. If we are not watchful, then we'll suffer defeat. If the armies in Afghanistan and all around the world were not watchful, they would suffer defeat. Merciful God. Remember this, if there was nothing to guard, then God would not have said, watch ye, be alert and on your guard. I'm telling you that the devil is looking to knock on your door, but I'm telling you, and I want to make this abundantly clear, the devil's power is not equal to God. No, no, listen, listen very carefully. The devil's power is not equal to God. God's power is beyond measure. It is unlimitless. And the more you hold on to the word of God, and the more you declare the word of God, and the more you watch in the word of God, I'm telling you there's nowhere for the devil to go. Our men are in trouble because they've been deceived. But the devil is a liar. The devil is forever probing our defenses, looking for the smallest signs of weakness in order to attack and overwhelm us. Guys, I'm talking to you. This is what the devil's doing to our men. Come on. This is what he's doing to our men. He is forever probing our defenses. There are weak areas in our lives that he probes. He's fishing. He's always looking for a way in. But when you saturate your mind with the word of God and you are watchful and you are alert and you are keeping guard, there's no room for him in the inn. There's no room. The Bible says, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. My, 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 my. Our God expects us to be ever watchful, alert, and on our guard as men, and ensure that we are vigilant with all diligence to take care of that which he has placed in our hands. Whether you are husbands, you take care of what God has placed in your hands. Whether you have a family, you take care of what God has placed in in your hands. You know how to do that? You do it God's way. Because when you do it God's way, you're going to get it right. But when you start operating by the world's system and the world's way of doing things, you're going to get it wrong. Everything starts with God. I want us to understand that. And as men, we are to be ever vigilant over every detail of life. Being certain that every thought and act is in harmony with what? Hallelujah. With the word of God. That's where we fail. Because we believe that we have to be men like the world's way of being a man. We're doing things the world's way, yet the Bible says love not the world, neither the things of the world. Hallelujah. And yet we choose to do things the world's way. We are men of God and we need to arise and be men of God. And that means that the tools of our trade are in the Word. What did Paul say? He said, as an apostle of Jesus Christ. Because remember he spoke in the scriptures, he said, the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. The word warfare means apostolic career. So what Paul is saying, that in my career as an apostle of Jesus Christ, the weapons that I fight with, they're not carnal, they're not man-made, but they are mighty through God. The only way he can pull down strongholds, hallelujah, is to use the weapons of the word. Man, I'm telling you, we have a power inside of us that we are. We've got to start waking up. We really do. 
We are failing in our duty as men if we're not doing things God's way. You have more power in you than you realize. Hallelujah. Lord, I receive that today in Jesus' name. Glory to God. I receive all that you have for me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When the word alert is used, the word alert means to be vigilant, to be attentive. So when you see the scripture in, in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, where it says, be alert and be on your guard, the word alert means vigilant, attentive, to guard against danger, and to be watchful. That's what the Apostle Paul is teaching us. And the word, the word guard, in fact, let me give it to you here. Definition of alert, vigilantly attentive. Vigilantly attentive. Not just attentive, but being vigilant. Focus. Watch what you're doing. Clearly. Guard against danger. Well, you know, when you go to Buckingham Palace, you know you see the, the guy standing with his big hat. You know, even the gun that he's holding his will. It has bullets in it. He's a guard. So he's standing guard. He's watching out for any danger. And be watchful. And then the word guard means to watch over, shield, protect, or cover. So we're a covering for anything that may be trying to get, whether in our families, in those in our sphere of influence, we are to guard it God's way. Hallelujah. We are to keep watch over, and if necessary, take precautions. Hallelujah. To control entrance and exit. In other words, you watch the front, and you watch the back. Oh, glory be to God. I'm telling you, God is good. And the word guard means protective or defensive stance toward something. Oh, we give you praise, Lord God. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Therefore, the kingdom man must be particularly aware of weaknesses peculiar to his own person. And in such matters, be watchful, alert, and on your guard. Now, the reason why this is here is because a lot of times when I'm doing ministry to men, men have a number of issues that they're going through. They have a number of problems that they're going through, and they want to resolve those problems. And those problems generally can be peculiar to that particular person. They could have a weakness in a particular area, whether it's drug-related, gambling-related, whether it's women-related, there's a weakness in that area. And so we have to be watchful, okay? And, and we need to be on our guard so that we can actually deal with those things. And if necessary, we take precaution so that it doesn't happen again. And we use the word of God to help us to do that. Praise the name of the Lord. When we start doing things God's way, God will make us more than conquerors. Remember the word true grit? One of the words for true grit was unconquerable. Hallelujah. That's the God in whom we serve. Therefore, we need to stand firm in our faith. If I say that God is my God, then I need to stand firm on what he says. My beloved brothers, we're making too many mistakes because we're choosing to do things our own way. But God wants us to stand firm in our faith in him. In your faith and all that it teaches, we must be absolutely firm and absolutely unyielding. If I say to you that I'm waiting on the Lord to do something, then I need to wait on him. And I'll tell you, I had to do that the past couple of days. There were some things that we were waiting on, and I did become anxious, I have to tell you. There were a couple of times I became very anxious, but then I started, I said, you know what? I started to put on some worship songs. I started to give God praise, and I gave God thanks. And the moment I did that, things changed. And then last night, we did exactly the same thing, my wife and my, and my daughter and I, we, we, we sang some worship songs, just giving thanks to God. And the moment we did that, things began to change. The Bible says, cast all your care upon him, because he cares for you. Oh, glory be to God. You understand that? Now, casting your care is a very simple thing to do, okay? Let me give you, let me give you an example. My brother, 
Te kita ma pepe ma nësa. Nasë në mitje. O, glove pi, se ta. The Bible encourages us, and I want to say this to us, my beloved brother. What's your name, sir? Yvette. Yvette. Nice to meet you, Yvette. God bless you. Now, the Bible says that we have to cast our cares upon him. Is that correct? That's what the Bible says. In 1 Peter 5, verse 7, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares upon, about you. Okay? Casting your cares doesn't mean that you, you give something to God and then you try to do it with yourself. Here's how casting your cares upon him works. This is, this is my cares, okay? I'm going to give you my kids. He now has my kids, okay? Now, I don't have to think about that anymore. You can take a seat. Take that with you as well. Take a seat, right? He's now got my kids. So who has my kids? Yeah. He has, he has my kids. You understand that? <laughs> so I don't have to think about them anymore. So he can now take care of my kids. That's the kind of way that we need to give our kids to God. If I give God something, then I need to trust that he's going to do it. You understand that? That's what's important. If I didn't give the cares to, my, to, to God, okay, then I can't blame God when things ain't working. You understand? But the fact that I've let go of those cares, I've forgotten all about it now. So my brother, you can keep that. Praise God. See? That's it. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Oh, Father, we give you praise. I'm telling you, God is so good. We triumph best when we stand firm. We really do. We triumph best when we stand firm. When we stand firm. When we have guts and fortitude. And we stand on the word of God. My beloved brothers, it's time for us to wake up. There's a spirit in us that's been dormant for too long. We have a power inside of us, I'm telling you, that you can take off like a rocket at any time. Hallelujah. You can take off like a rocket. And that's why I'm so excited when it comes to the things of God. I'm really excited about it. Glory be to God. Now, we're going to just go here now to Ephesians chapter 6. And I want to touch on this now because we're going to have a short break in, just minute, in a few minutes. Okay, Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 11. Glory be to God. The Bible says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. This is the Amplified Version. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which who supplies? God. Who supplies it? God. God. Come on, say it like you mean it. Who supplies it? God. Big man. God supplies that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to do what? Resist. And? Stand. And? Your ground. Okay, resist and stand your ground, hallelujah, on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands, to stand firmly in your place. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Now we need to be like soldiers in a grand army on a battlefield. Resolve never to give the least ground, never to despair, never to surrender, but instead to conquer and to triumph. I want to say to you, when you use this, and when you put on the dress code, you are more than a conqueror. You will be able to stand your ground, and you will conquer, and you will triumph every day of your life because you are standing and you are dressed in the word. Hallelujah. You've got on everything that God has supplied, and there is no room for the enemy to maneuver, and you are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Amen. You have guts, you have fortitude, you have courage, you have boldness, and therefore you are now walking and operating with true grit. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's how good our God is. So every morning now, I dress myself. Hallelujah. Help me to salvation. Breastplate of righteousness, integrity and moral rectitude, 
shield of faith, belt of truth, and the word of God, which is what? The sword of the spirit. Hallelujah. And also our firm footed stability with our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I'm telling you that when we dress ourselves, I have, I have prayers that I pray for this, you know. I pray the armor on, hallelujah, every morning, because I want to be dressed in the right clothing. And I'm saying to you that each time I do that, the Lord just helps us. That's why it tells us in Ephesians 6 and verse 18, it says, pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty, to that end. Keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Oh, glory be to God. I want to say this, and I, and I, and I want to say this with, 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 with a heart. I need you to take it in the intention that it's given. There are a lot of ministers today who are making some bad choices and have made some bad mistakes. Okay? The first thing that I do when I have anything that's happened to anybody is I pray for them. That is my responsibility as a child of God. And I want to say the same to you. Pray for them. Pray for a turnaround in their situation. Pray that they repent and they get back to their relationship with God and they move on with their lives. We're not here to be judge and jury. We are here to give the word. We are here to promote the word. It is the gospel of peace. There are people that make mistakes in life. I'm not saying you condone what they've done. I'm saying you do things God's way. And the best way thing that you can do when it comes to the things of God is make sure that whoever's making any mistakes, you pray for them. You put them before God. I see too many ministers beating up each other, bashing each other on, 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 on um, social media, newspapers and all kinds of stuff bashing other ministers. I'm telling you, you need to have a heart of compassion and start praying for our men. Because I'm telling you, there are a lot of them that are, are, are feeling it right now. Pressure and all kinds of things are happening to a lot of our ministers and a lot to our men as well. We need to pray for them. And when you see them, encourage them. Share the scripture with them and encourage them. And let the Lord work upon their lives. Amen. Amen. It's time to do that. Tired of all the bickering and nonsense. We shouldn't be doing that in the house of God. It shouldn't be happening. That's not God's way. God is the ultimate judge. Have mercy on us, Lord. I'm telling you. Now we're going to do this prayer, and then we're going to just we're going to have a break after this prayer because there's more prayers that we're going to do. But we're going to do this prayer. This this prayer is taken from uh, verse 14. These are parts of the armor. Okay, we're going to pray them, all right, and uh, you know, the recordings will be made available to you to remind you of them, but we want to pray them and mean what you say and say what you mean, praise the name of the Lord. That's how I pray, that's why I love praying the scriptures, hallelujah. Here's what it says, let's do it together. Lord God, thank you for the belt of truth. I put this around my waist now so that it can hold everything together. Help me to walk in truth at all times. I can walk in truth because you, Lord, are with me in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you know why I like praying the scriptures, because I'm just praying the word of God back to God. So he knows my heart. He knows I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. Glory be to God. All right, let's just do this one. Let's, let's stand and we're going to just do this one. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord God. Let's do this. One, two, three, go. Lord, Lord God, God, I thank you for the breastplate of righteousness. I put this on now so that I can be in right standing with you and with others. Help me to walk in righteousness at all times. I can walk in righteousness because you, Lord God, are with me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Isn't God good? Amen. All right. Greetings. I'd like to 
give you the opportunity today for those of you who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, that you receive him into your heart. It was the best decision that I ever made in my life. And I'm sure it will be the best decision that you will ever make. I want to say to you today that God loves you. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, God so greatly loved and prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten unique son so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to or relies on him shall not perish or come to destruction or be lost but have everlasting life. Isn't that wonderful? I also want to share with you today that Christ died for your sins, for my sins. The scriptures tell us, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, the Apostle Paul says, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. So today, you too can receive Jesus Christ as your personal saviour. And if that is you today, right now, and you would like to accept Christ as your saviour, then repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. You said in your word, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. You said also, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I am calling upon your name. I desire you to save me now. You said in your word, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died for my sins according to the scriptures. I believe that he is raised from the dead for my justification. With my mouth, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I confess now that I am saved. Amen. Well, praise God. If you have made that decision today, that is the best decision that you have ever made. And if you would like to, uh, for us to send you some information, please do contact us on the information below. We will not store your information. We just want to get some information to you to set you on your way to your newfound faith. So God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you and keep you in perfect peace. Until next time, stay blessed.